What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Justin Foles. We're back at it again with another video. And today we're looking at Veiled Experts, the first preview. I have never heard of this game. I was too focused on uh, loading up uh, Hogwarts Legacy. I fell asleep last night. I got off for work. I get off for work really late. I get off for work at midnight. So uh, I fell asleep while I was downloading. So it's downloading now. And I'm going to play it. I'm going to upload a video after that. But in the meantime, while I was doing that, I figured I'd do a real quick reaction. And I saw this game. It looked interesting. So we are going to check it out and then do some research after. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the video. Veiled Experts is quite the mysterious name for a game that is filled with mechanics and game modes that are commonplace in multiplayer shooters these days. Being familiar isn't a bad thing here, though. The team-based tactical shooter is easy to pick up and play confidently, as oh, demonstrated Larry. in the short time I had to preview it. Its two modes, a standard deathmatch with a little twist and a more tactical bomb defusal, were a bombastic good time, but without much depth. It looks like Rogue Company. Y'all remember Rogue Company? Do people still play that game? Like, do y'all still play that game? Let me know. It looks like it looks like Rogue Company. That's what it's given. Outside of the running and gunning, the future for a game like this in today's tough games as a service climate seems cloudy. Before you jump into either game mode, you're introduced to a cast of contractors that you can take the field with. A surprising nine of them were available to try, each with their own sets of passive and active abilities. I didn't get to examine and try out team comms that took the best advantage of these unique abilities, but some seem like they can be pretty impactful. Like this guy who is definitely not John Wick, but can stun enemies <laughs> with pistol shots to the torso. The cast is also pretty diverse and aesthetically expressive up close, but I found that when it came to game time, it was pretty hard to identify them. They dress well and have fun haircuts, but in the heat of battle, they're all just humanoid they shapes. Play the same. Of yeah. the two modes available, I hate when they when it's a game like that. You have such diverse looking characters, but then when you put them into the world, they all play the same and they all move the same. I feel like that's a bit lazy on a developer's part like you spent so much time making them look unique um and giving them these nice backstories and abilities but when you play them in the game it is really no different they really don't make a difference in gameplay maybe that's just because he got he didn't get to play it much maybe they're working on that still but i think if you know that technique is kind of lazy to me bomb defusal was the star both teams take turns defending and attacking two points on a map, with the attacking team tasked with planting a bomb and keeping it safe long enough to go off. The second map I played on, a multi-story art gallery, was my favorite, as it encapsulated Veiled Expert's emphasis on planning and thinking strategically. There are multiple ways into the building, and only a limited time to do so as a Fortnite-style level barrier slowly closes in around you. You can go through the front door, of course, but finding side and window entrances were also on the table. During the first assault my team made, we blew a hole in the wall in the basement from the parking garage and caught our enemies completely off guard. That's the hole we made like stayed that. there for the remainder of our attacking rounds, but this light, hitman-esque problem solving made us feel brilliant in the moment. The other map, a cluttered parking lot with some warehouses and vehicles, was a bit underwhelming in comparison. A sandstorm would randomly whip up and make seeing more than a few feet in front of us impossible. In these moments, things felt like utter chaos. Otherwise, the strategy felt far more in favor of the defenders, who could park themselves on one of the two roofs and see most of the map, and were much more prepared to engage attackers than the other way around, with far fewer options to be dynamic as the aggressor. It felt the most like the team deathmatch mode, which featured both squads in a straight up shootout, with the play area guard railed by that aforementioned barrier, moving back and forth between different positions on the map. This was a great little twist that forced teams to not get too entrenched, forcing everyone to think for a few seconds ahead at all times. All of that was probably Honestly, that was probably one of the smartest things that was added, that was implemented into um, these uh, multiplayer shooter games, because it 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 discourages it discourages camping, and it keeps you on your toes because you could be heading the circle, you might run into another group or whatever. Like I think I think that was a, a good idea. It it it, it encourage it discourages camping and encourages more more interaction with your enemy and more 
resource management and more, you know, strategy, straight out strategy, you know? All of the character abilities were disabled in this mode though, with the action boiling down to who's got better weapons and the skills to wield them. The shop is available between rounds of bomb defusal or between deaths in team deathmatch, mm -hmm. with money earned based on your performance. You can purchase weapons and items, upgrade your team's tactical level, which widens the offering of what you can buy, or donate your cash to other players so that they can get their gear up to speed. I'm sure there's plenty of tactical depth to the timing and the assignment of gear that I didn't have the chance to dig into. And mixed with the round recap time elapsed maps after every round, there's plenty of competitive potential here. But for those queuing up solo or looking for a long-term game to really invest in, Veiled Expert seems to be lacking much to earn or do outside of the round-to-round -round play. Cosmetics and agents to unlock okay. seems to be a given, but there's no indication that special events or incentives to play will exist at this time. It's even too early to tell how many agents will be in the game or how many maps will exist for each mode at this stage in development. It's a solid start for a third-person competitive team shooter, but the market is very crowded these days. With bright and promising service games shutting down pretty frequently, I worry about its longevity without something to keep people coming back. For more on your favorite shooters, don't miss the latest video for the day before, as well as a new map trailer for Call of Duty Warzone. And for everything else in the world of video games, stick with IGN. Yeah, okay. So the the end of it pretty much told the tale. Like it's a cool game, but due to the oversaturation of this of the market for this type of game, um and the lack of I guess the lack of features to differentiate it or make it playable for or, or give it replay valuable, give replay value or make it make it make people want to play it over a long period of time is you know lacking lacking to to say um to say the least so it's probably gonna be lit for the first few weeks and then it's gonna shut down like hyperspace shut down they're about to shut down apex mobile they're about to shut down um the battlefield i think the battlefield uh 2042 i think they're about to shut that game that game down mad games like this are about to get shut down so it's like if you can't stand out if you can't be on a level of a PUBG or a Fortnite or a Warzone, if you can't bring something to the table, you know that those that those that those three that I just named don't bring, your game is not gonna last. So, um, I'll be willing to give this a try. Though. I'm not really a if y'all notice, I'm not really a big shooter guy, but I play them every now and then. Like I play them every now and then off, you know, if the boys need one, you know, every now every once in a blue moon. I'll pop in with them, but because I'm not really a shooter, I don't have the patience to like quote unquote get good at shooters. I'm more of a single player adventure kind of game. It's like you can kind of tell that by the games that I play on my channel and by the games that I cover on my channel. So yeah, so um, it, it does look interesting. though. it does look interesting. I hope that they work out the kinks and things of that nature, and that the game is ready to go. But by the time it it launches. It just looks like it's going to be a free-to-play game. Matter of fact, we can look that up because I already have the Google page queued up. Um, what's on Steam? Failed Experts is a free-to-play up. Free-to-play team-based online shooter is developed by Nexon Games. Free-to-play. Let's see what if it has a release date. Okay, it's planned. It's supposed to come out this year. It looks like it's only coming out on PC. So this is Nexon Games. The only other game they had is a first descendant. Some of y'all might know that. Some of y'all might not. If you do, comment down below. Let us know how it is. Um Yeah, so this is uh seems to be an indie developer. And they're trying to step into the battle royale type uh type vibe. And they got some people playing it, some developers playing it right now. So again, it gives me role company vibes, which people still play, but like not as much as used they used to when it first came out but um yeah we'll see we'll see so um y'all let me know try thing in the comments are you gonna cop this game are you done are you not let me know so um y'all already know the vibes like comment subscribe all that good stuff it's your boy just falls we out one